hi guys you're welcome back to my youtube channel today we'll be learning how to make a two-in-one off shoulder ruffle top you could rock it as a top or as a bra top so let's get started now you will be needing your basic bodice pattern and i will drop the link in the description box on the previous tutorial on how on how to draft a basic bodice yeah so, but basically, we're going to be needing just the shoulder, chest, and waistline. So, this is the edge of my fold on my pattern paper. This is my shoulder line, my chest line, and the waistline. But this time around, I went about 2 inches below my belly button. That's the length of the top. So, I'm marking half of my cross back measurement on the shoulder and chest line. Still on the chest line, I'm marking quarter of my bust circumference plus one inch for side seam allowance. Now for this top, I'm working with um, 20 inches plus half inch for seam allowance as my length of top. I will still be adding an elastic band, okay? So it's going to increase the length. Now, because of the elastic band, I'll be measuring the same thing I have on the chest line on my waistline. So that'll be cut out of my bust plus one inch for side seam allowance. So I'll just connect all the points together. So for this, like I said, we just need um, a skeletal frame of the basic bodice pattern. We do not need that, we don't need the bust that, we don't need the under bust line and all of that. Basically, just the shoulder, chest, and waistline. So, I'll connect the shoulder and chest line together like so. Then, we'll just create um, the shoulder slant. So, I'll just mark 3 inches for my neck um, width. Come down by 1 inch from the shoulder line and create the shoulder slant. Now, um, I'm doing all of this because of beginners so that you can flow. So basically, we are adapting a, a basic body pattern into an off shoulder pattern. So I'm just creating my armhole like so with my French curve. Yeah, so this is the skeletal framework of a basic body. Now, to make an off shoulder body, you will need to come down from the shoulder line by some inches. Now, the minimum you can do is 4 inch. To create an off shoulder pattern so um, I will be coming down by probably five six inches it depends on how off you want the top to be so four is a minimum okay and you're coming down from the shoulder line not the slanted shoulder so I'll just do six I'll mark six inches on the armor curve like so okay then next I'll come to the center front to determine my neck depth so I will just go with my chest line. I don't want to reveal too much. Yeah. So um, you can actually create any kind of neckline you want. It could be straight, can be curvy, can be sweetheart, any kind of neckline. Just get the main technique of you know sewing the style. I think I want to go up a bit from the chest line. Yeah, I'm trying to play safe. I really don't like to reveal my cleavage, so I'll just do 7, yeah, I'm trying to play safe, 7. You can go lower than that if you want to, okay? Then, um, this is 6, yeah. So, I'm going to connect these two points together with my curve, but the less curvy parts. You can use ruler if you want yours to be very sharp, the actually depends on your choice. So, this is the neckline. We don't need all of this again. Now. We'll be using the same pattern to draft the back. This is the front. So, um, but for the back, I don't want this sharp via the back. So I'll just do a straight neckline for the back, starting from um, where we marked 6 inches. So I'm just going to cut this out now. So the straight neckline is for the back. The curvy part is for the front. I will just cut this out and we'll see. Yeah, so we'll cut out the back first. We'll be using the back pattern to cut both front and back. Then later, we can now, you know, cut out the front neckline. So this is the back. Okay? I'll transfer this to my fabric now. Then we'll cut out this later to cut out the front. 
I hope that was explanatory enough. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so I have transferred um, the pattern to my fabric. So I have two pieces, one for front, one for back. I've added my seam allowance to um, the armhole and, of course, the top of the bodice. So um, I'm going to adjust the pattern now to cut the front. Like I said, the curvy part is the front neckline. So I'm just going to cut it out. Excuse me. Cut it out like so. Okay. So after cutting it out, I will still need to adjust the pattern on the fabric and then add my seam allowance. Like so. Yeah, so super, super easy. Curvy neckline, front pattern, straight neckline, back pattern. As easy as that. So I'll just go ahead and place both patterns together, take it to my sewing machine, and sew down with one inch for my side seam allowance. Okay, so this is one inch for one side, one inch on the other side. Then I want to use my bias tape to tape the armholes separately, not together, please, separately. So let me do that. I've done that already. I've sewn my side seams. I've turned the armhole with my bias tape on both sides and then the lower part of the body that is um, the hemline I have also used my overlocker to lock the rough edges you can see so I'll be attaching this to um, elastic band much later now um, we're going to be making um, ruffles which I've done already but I'll just explain quickly so what I did was I cut out a very long rectangle yeah, and the length of this rectangle is going to be three or four times your um, shoulder circumference measurements as you've seen in the picture I just posted here. Yeah, so let me just demonstrate with um, this paper. Okay, so let me assume this is the fabric I cut out. Let me assume this is the length of the rectangle. Yeah, like this. So I'm saying that the length is three or four times your shoulder circumference measurement. And then um, the width, or should I call it the height now, is going to be um, from your neckline of the off shoulder to at least your underbody. So for me, I'm working with about, I think, nine inches or thereabouts. Okay. So let me just go over that again. I said the length is four times um, your shoulder circumference measurement. So I have gathered um, one side of the rectangle. I've gathered it back to my original shoulder circumference measurement. Okay? So this is it. Make sure you arrange the gathers well and make sure you use the exact measurement. Then you just add extra um, one inch that you used to join both sides together okay and then I used my overlocker to lock the rough edges you know on the other side that's this side okay so um, that's all basically then we just go ahead to attaching it to the dress now I'll fold it the body side beg your pardon <laughs> I'll fold my ruffle into two and notch it so that I can get the midpoint okay and then I'm also gonna notch the midpoint on the center front of my blouse so that um, we could align the point together okay so um, I think we can see clearly now so now I've placed ruffle on the front here so you position it from one end of let me okay before we do that um we need to join the two um back um how do i put it now the two opening at the back we need to join it together so i'm gonna flip this over like two and join it with um half an inch okay like this so you just sew the two together to you know have a closure there all right so after joining this is what we're going to be having okay you would also notch the center back here and you know join it together where you have the joining on the ruffle that should be like a reference point for you like that okay so i will pin it together like i'm doing in right now okay so i'll go ahead now i'll flip the 
flipped it over to the right side or should I do to the front so I'll match this with one end of the armhole here okay please not towards the armpit and uh, where the off shoulder stops exactly okay and I'll also match it on this other side okay like so with my pins this is it okay so I'll just match it make sure you use your correct um, shoulder circumference measurement but even if it's a bit um, loose you can just have a little plate here and there you know to tighten it up okay so now I also made um, bias tape with the fabric and it was so so easy to do this is one inch on fold so I'll just quickly explain how I came about the bias yeah so you are making a bias tape and you don't have a bias tape maker you do not need to cut um, the fabric on fold how do I explain this now um, this is the bias tape I made okay I think um, let me look for a more accurate edge of the fabric or let me just get the other fabric that the other larger portion of the fabric that's good that's going to be more easier to explain okay good let me use this other side that is um more um should i say straight okay now so you fold your fabric like this like a triangle then you're gonna cut out the stripes on bias can you see you cut it out in pieces it's different from when you just fold it straight like this there's a huge difference so you're cutting the stripes on bias okay and then you're gonna have some pieces so you have to join the pieces together maybe two three pieces and then iron it it's gonna form the bias tape for you yeah so it's better than cutting the stripe on a straight fold so um, now that I've attached the ruffle or should I say I want to go and attach the ruffle to my um, bodice what I'm going to do now is I'm oh sorry guys okay so i'll be attaching the bias from the from inside like you see you see me do now yeah so i'm going to turn it around okay before i now flip it over to the right side okay so here it is i've done that already okay so it's not remaining for me to flip it from the inside outward but it's going to be quite difficult with this bulky seam allowance so i want to go ahead and trim off the bulky seam allowance from the you know this is from the um guard ring so you just trim it off carefully don't trim off the seam so now i've trimmed off the seam allowance so i will fold the bias now outward okay to cover the rough edges and i'll just sew this round okay so here we are this is how it looks like it's super super easy to make okay all right so next thing we're gonna go to the lower part of the top like i said we're going to be making use of elastic so for the elastic you're going to be using your waist circumference not the circumference on the waistline on the fabric okay so by the time you use the waist circumference measurement you join the two ends together and then attach it to the waist okay you can use pins to secure this so that the stretch will be even distributed okay so finally this is the outlook so this is the first look okay and then the second look so you can actually choose whichever whichever look you want so thank you for watching